my name is Alex Triclow and I'm the writer of thisfeel.com. My website is about empowering and inspiring everyone to take charge of our children's speech and language throughout the world. The site offers really practical, amazing content that's beneficial for teachers, parents, uh, speech therapists and any other therapists really. And even if you're a student studying speech therapy, this website's going to be a really great resource for you. I hope that by this stage you have had a little look through my website to see the fantastic freebies that I have available and that you have subscribed to my newsletter. It's super easy to do, just see here. I have a lot of new content that I'll be releasing over the next, next 6 to 12 months and beyond, including these easy to follow video tutorials, 5 blog posts per week, informational ebooks and school holiday packs along with endless downloads. In fact, if you subscribe to my newsletter, you will receive a free ebook to download straight away. All of the content you see is written by me and based on my personal experiences from the past six years that I have been a speech pathologist, working together with children, families and teachers. So last week we looked at the developmental expectations for children when they're developing their speech sounds. So this week we're going to be talking about the different mouth parts that we use to make each of the speech sounds. And then I'm going to link each speech sound to the phonetic alphabet and the specific alphabetic letter that we make, uh, that we use to write down what the child is saying. This will be a really good refresher if you're a speech pathology student uh, and also a really good introduction if you haven't seen the phonetic alphabet before. So remember that on the website there are some developmental expectation sheets that you can download and they're all about the speech sounds. So this one is our speech sounds for girls and this one is our speech sounds for boys. There are some other uh, handouts within that pack that go through some different aspects of speech sound development. For this particular tutorial, there is a handout that goes with it and this one is just going to really help you to uh, take in all of the information. At points, the phonetic alphabet is not super exciting, so the table that you can see on the handout is going to be filled in as we go. So uh, definitely keep it next to you as you go. You could fill it in on an iPad if you have one. Uh, because it is a Word document, um, or you can print it out and do it as you go, um, writing with a pen. Um, the, as there is a second page, and the second page is going to be going through the vowels, and then we're going to do some uh, practice of, this, of the phonetic transcription with some real words that I'm going to say. So I hope this is a really good resource for you, and look, watch it again if you're feeling like you need to take in more information about phonetic transcription. So the phonetic alphabet is really useful for being accurate and specific when we write down the sounds that the children are making. So I want to give you an example. If you have a look at this sound that you can see up on the screen, what would you say this sound is? So you might have said that it's the oo sound, which is pretty common. But the thing is that it could also make the o sound which is a different sound. In words, the same spelling might be used to spell two different words. So for example, we might spell the word boot with the double O and it makes the oo sound, whereas in the word book, the same spelling is used but we make a different sound. So if I write the oo sound, everyone might interpret it differently, so it's a very unreliable way of writing down the sound that the child has made, or the sound that I have made even. So now I will show you the phonetic letters that I used for these sounds. So here is the oo sound, and here is the oo sound. Each phonetic letter only has one sound, and each sound only has one phonetic letter. There is no variation. And it's really consistent across anyone who uses the phonetic alphabet internationally. As we go through each sound, I will give you the phonetic alphabet letters for each sound. 
so that you can write them in your table. We are going to gradually put all of the consonant speech sounds and the phonetic transcription into this table. The table is organised by three key elements that are important to remember. The first is manner of production. Manner refers to the nature of the sound. Is it quick or slow? Can you hold the sound for a long time? We are going to enter the manner in the leftmost column. The manners include stops. These are also called plosives. Stops are a quick mouth sound that cannot be held for a long time. And they involve a complete blocking of the air at some place in the mouth and then a quick release of that air. For example, the p sound. Fricatives. These are sounds that come through the mouth but a part of the mouth is used to block some of the air and therefore change the sound. These sounds can be held for as long as the breath can go for and tend to sound like they have a little bit of friction. For example, the sound. Affricates. These are also sounds that come through the mouth and a part of the mouth is used to block some of the air and therefore change the sound. The difference between these and fricatives is that the affricates are sounds that are quick and can't be held for a long time. For example, ch. The way I like to remember fricatives and affricates is that there is a lot of friction between the two parts of mouth that are restricting the airflow. Nasal. These are nose sounds where the airflow comes through the nose. For example, mmm. Liquids and glides. These are also mouth sounds that are created by two parts of the mouth being really close together, but they don't create the friction sound like in fricatives. For a liquid, as in all and er, the tongue is used to create a sound with a very complex movement of the tongue. Glides include the sounds w and y and are sometimes also called semi-vowels because the sound that they make involve a glide of the air over the tongue and can sound like vowels if they are prolonged. So the second element that we have to talk about is what's called voicing. The ability to produce voice comes from the vocal cords which are inside your voice box. The vocal cords vibrate and that produces the voiced sound when the air flows over the vocal cords. Some sounds have the voice switched on, whilst others have them switched off, which means they are not vibrating and the air is just simply flowing past them. So I want you to start by understanding that concept for yourself and feeling the voice. Put your hand really gently on your neck, right about here. Breathe in and out gently. Can you feel any vibrations happening? The answer should be no. Whilst you are breathing, the vocal cords are not vibrating. The air is simply flowing past them, up and down. Now take a breath and make a really long ah uh sound. Now you should have felt a lot of vibration. It feels like a bee is trapped inside your voice box. And this is a really great analogy to use with children when you're talking about the voice being on or off. So now I want you to take a deep breath and go Do you feel any vibration? You shouldn't because the vocal cords are not vibrating and this is a voiceless sound. So as we work through each of the sounds, you will need to think about whether the voice is turned on or off. On your chart, you can use two different coloured pens if you want to denote which sounds are voiced and which sounds are voiceless. And if you're working on the computer, every time I enter a voiced sound, I enter it in bold.
whilst the voiceless sounds get entered in regular font. So now we will talk about the third important element of the table, and that is the place of articulation of the sounds. This indicates which mouth parts are used to make each sound, and we will be placing these in the top row, and we will fill in the table as we go. When we talk about place, we will start with front mouth parts and slowly move our way back. So the first place we will talk about is bilabials. These are sounds made with two, five, lips, labials. So the upper and lower lip are together. The first bilabial sound that we'll make is B. See it up close. I have already told you that it is a bilabial. So now have a think as to what the manner is and whether it is voiced or voiceless. This is a stop and it is voiced. But Remember, fill your voice box if you need clues about the voicing. So it goes on the table here. The next bilabial sound that we will do is p. See it up close. P. P. I want you to make this sound exactly the same way that I make it. This is the way I am making it. P. Don't fall into the trap of saying p. Have a think about the manner and the voicing. Wow, so it's the same manner and the same place as but, but this one is voiceless. So it is nearly the same as but, but the voice is different. So this is a pair and they go, both go in the same box on the table. But notice that I put the voiced sound in bold and the voiceless sound in regular font. You can use two different colours if you like. The next bilabial sound is mmm. See it up close. Mmm. 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 Think very carefully about this sound and make it just like me. Aha! So we have found one of the nasal sounds. The mouth is shut, so of course there is no mouth airflow and it's all travelling through the nose. Feel your voice box. Mmm. And yep, it's voiced. So let's put it on the table. The next bilabial sound is W. See it up close. W. W. Okay, so that is our first category of the place of articulation of sounds. I have used the phonetic alphabet in my table and what a bonus, these consonant sounds use the same alphabetic letters as the normal alphabet that you know. This does change with some of the sounds, but a lot of the consonant sounds do use the same phonetic letter. The next place that we are going to talk about is labiodental sounds. The name gives a clue. Labio means lip and dental means teeth. Can you work out which sounds might be made with a lip and the teeth? Just one of the lips. There are two. It is the th and th sounds. See them here. They are fricatives. V is voiced, whilst f is voiceless. So here they are on the table. Again, the phonetic alphabet letters for these sounds are the same as the normal alphabet. The next place we are talking about is dental sounds, made with the teeth. This is a bit of a trick name because it actually involves the tongue as well. 
and is sometimes called linguodental. These sounds are the th and m sounds. See them up close. Okay, now pause for a second. How would you spell each of these sounds using the normal alphabet? It's not a trick. They are spelled exactly the same. They are both fricatives. However, one is voiced and one is voiceless. The voiced sound is the one in that whilst the voiceless sound is the one in thing. So here is the table with the th and th sounds entered with the phonetic alphabet. Remember, the bold one is the voiced sound. Okay, so now we do the alveolar sounds. From now onwards, all of the sounds involve the use of the tongue. And the place refers to the place that the tongue touches or goes close to to make the sound. The alveolar area is the ridge of gum just behind your top teeth. You can feel it with your tongue or your finger. There is a lot of sounds made in this place, but with all different manners. We are going to move them through them quite quickly, so pay attention. D, d, And now we are going to do the palato-alveolar sounds. The palate is the roof of your mouth. There are some sounds made with the tongue touching somewhere between or on the alveolar ridge and the palate. These include And now the palatal sound. There is only one. It is the y sound. Y. Y. So now the velar sounds. The velum is also known as the soft palate. And it is the very back section of the roof of your mouth. The back of your tongue raises up to touch the velum. And so we call them velar sounds. These sounds are k, k, g, g, m, Finally, there is one last consonant sound made with all the mouth parts just at rest and air flows through the glottis, which is your air pipe above your vocal cords. It is called a glottal sound for that reason and it is the sound. That is all the consonant speech sounds and your table should now be full. Some of the consonant sounds will have normal alphabet letters while some of them might have been a little bit confusing, especially the Y sound. So now I want to take you quickly through the vowel sounds and the phonetic alphabet letters for each of these. I won't be talking about the place or the manner of the vowel sounds at this stage and it's really important to know that they are all voiced. Vowels are never voiceless in the Australian English uh, language. So here they are.
You can see the table that you have on your worksheet. I will show you each sound and how they are made. I will show you and tell you a word with that sound in the middle or at some point in that word. And I will also show you the letter that we choose from the phonetic alphabet to make that sound. So here they are. E, E, seed, I, I, hit, I, 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 sit, E, E, bed. to keep in mind with vowels is that it doesn't matter how they are spelled on paper. So in the phonetic alphabet each sound only has one spelling. So let's have a look at the A sound. A. Here is the phonetic spelling but look at all of these words. Fate, day, rain, late, pray. They all have the A sound in them, and so phonetically we would spell them only with this symbol. Don't let your knowledge of the spelling of a word trick you and make you spell with the wrong phonetic letters. Now finally, let's do some quick practice at putting it all together. Let's have a look at the word cup. We have expectations for how a person should say the word phonetically. And so we put these in square brackets. Cup. You'll notice that I chose a K to spell it. Have a look back at your transcription chart and see if you can find the letter C. It doesn't exist in the phonetic alphabet. If you hear the K sound, we only use the letter K. When the person says the word, we then write exactly the sounds that we hear. So here I will tr transcribe me saying the word with and without errors. Cup. Tup. Cup. Have a look and see that I use the slashes for these because this is a transcription of the actual sounds being produced. 
and take a special note again that the letter C does not exist when we are writing sounds with the phonetic alphabet. Now, no matter who reads my phonetic transcription, it is a universal international alphabet that anyone can read and interpret in exactly the same way. Really keep in mind though that the phonetic alphabet is only for a way of writing down exactly what a child is saying. It has nothing to do with literacy, reading or spelling skills if you're working on them with children. So let's do some practice. I'm going to say some practice words and you need to transcribe them exactly as you hear them, not as you think they should be spelled. So here they are. On. On. Hot. Hot. Put. Put. Sing. Sing. Go. Go. Yes. Yes. Pause the video if you think you need a bit more time. Here are the answers on screen. How did you go? So this was quite a long video with a lot of information to take in, but now you have a reference sheet and you have the foundations for understanding how each sound is made and also the development of speech sounds. And you've also had a little bit of a look at the phonetic alphabet that a lot of people use to write down what children are saying exactly, and it really helps speech pathologists to communicate between each other to make sure that everyone understands and is on the same page. Next week, we're going to dive into the f and v sound, so it's going to be really fun. I hope that you've gotten something out of watching this video, uh, and definitely go back and watch them again if you're finding that you really need to take in the information all over again, if it's a bit of overload. There is a lot of content in these videos. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, or if there's even anything you didn't like, just let me know through Facebook, email, or directly through the website. And you can also ask questions through my Ask Alec page if you have some specific questions about your child. And I'll really try and get back to you. I hope you found something to put in your pocket and I can't wait to see you next week.